Hey, what's up there guys? So today I'm going to show you a few different uh, repairs and whatnot for your uh, PS3 controller. So this uh, this controller has, uh, has a decent battery in it, but I can show you how to do that. But uh, one of the most common issues uh, for PS3 controllers is the uh, swivel grip. So it's it's usually from people gripping their controller like this, and sometimes if you press on certain things, um, the controller just goes crazy um, and presses all different types of buttons at once. I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks on how to take care of that for this today, um, as well as a few other things for your PS3 controller. So, <clears throat> first, you're going to want to have a uh, a medium size uh, Phillips head screwdriver and then uh, you're gonna need some tape I like to use uh, painters tape um, this will help for the uh, swivel grip issue um, there are other different kind of tape that you can use um, although I like to use this or like um, you know uh, some form of like thinner tape but it still has a little bit of thickness to it so um, this painters tape is uh, is the best for it uh, I find um, so when it comes to disassembly um, you've got five screws here um, so you're gonna want to go ahead and remove all of those and depending on um, your PS3 controller um, it can be super tricky if you have one of the uh, three-piece shell um, controllers. Um, I'll show you that in a second. So disassembly and reassembly, especially reassembly, can be really tricky if you have one of the three-piece controllers. This is one of the two-piece. Um, so there's a piece that's right here that goes in between uh, the L1 and R2 or L1 and L2 buttons and then R2, R2 and L, R, R1 um, this is one of the um, regular types of controllers um, this one however is one of the three piece um, I don't know if you can see the uh, the three piece so yeah you can barely tell but there's that's the third piece right there um, so it can be a little more tricky to uh, reassemble these although um, these controllers can't uh, always be super common so if you have an issue with that um, you know shoot me a comment or something like that and I can do a video about that um, but for the most part, uh, these <coughs> these controllers here are more common, so I'm going to show you how to do it with this one. All right, now that all those screws are removed, uh, the PS3 controllers as well as PS4 and pretty much every PlayStation controller kind of has like a little claw grip so you're going to want to go in between the analog sticks and apply some pressure here and uh, just kind of pry it apart um, once you have this little notch out from under there you're going to want to go ahead and be very gentle and pop these out like this kind of press down on the uh, L2 and R2 buttons so that comes out um, so that's nice and good so. all right and then so battery replacement uh, battery replacement can tend to be pretty easy um, you just you know, remove this here and make sure you get it towards the end. You don't want to, <clears throat> you don't want to break these cords when you're, you know. I mean, if you're putting in a new one, it won't really matter. Um, but you want to be able to get that out of here. Um, so 
for the swivel grip issue, there is one screw here. And you're going to want to remove that screw. This is also the way <clears throat> that you disassemble it if you need to put new analog sticks in as well. Um, so you go ahead and lift the board out of there. You can push on the analog sticks from the underside to, to help get it out of there. Now, <clears throat> another trick for the swivel grip issue is to take this completely apart. Um, and um, the uh, the plastic um, the plastic board that's on um, the thin plastic board can be uh, taped down as well if you're having issues with that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab a Q-tip. Put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on it. And then you just go lightly on the contacts of the board here. Um, that's where the controller will sense it. Um, and then, so you clean that buddy off nice and good. And then uh, the plastic part here, uh, you're going to want to clean that off as well. Um, it's just for good measure. Um, normally, um, they don't really need to be cleaned off, but um, it can be helpful. Um, makes it work a little better. Uh, it may have had a little bit of dust or debris on it. Um, previously. So next, you're going to want to uh, lift this part up and you're going to want to be pretty careful because uh, they can they can tear so you just kind of pop it off real gently. Now this this little buddy here that was underneath that, this is what uh, we're focusing on. Um, it's inside this compartment here underneath the piece of plastic. This is the thing that is causing your controller to go crazy, this little piece of rubber. Um, see how it's kind of, uh, there we go, like uh, pressed down and kind of worn in there um, from the controller of years of use. Um, so I mean, I think you can probably either do replacement rubber pieces if you'd like, if you can get the sizing correctly. But uh, using using a decent piece of tape um, can help. So you just get just enough tape. You don't want to use too much, otherwise it won't let your controller close. So just the just the right amount, just the right amount of tape. This this may even be too much. Uh, so in in comparison here, um, that's about the right size uh, of width um, for for the rubber there. Um, so I'm just going to end up tearing up a little bit more here, um, just to make it shorter because it doesn't need to be that thick. Um, again, the the thickness of it. Um, you don't want to use too much, otherwise it won't con close your controller properly. You just want to give it uh, just that right amount of oomph to uh, to where your controller is not going to be pressing buttons crazily anymore. So you're going to want to lay down uh, the rubber piece here on the uh, on the stickiness of the tape. Actually, no, you don't want to do that. You want to do it on the other side and kind of roll it over to where the sticky side is on the outside. Oh, maybe I uh, should not have taken off that extra little piece there. That was just the right amount. Okay, so start from square one. There we go. Already got this. Uh, 
go in here. There we go. So you want to roll it. Yeah, roll it real good. And uh, make sure it's uh, the right size to, uh, to do it. There we go. So now the stickiness is on the outside. And that's what we need. It just needs a, a good little bufferness to it. Um, it doesn't need to be like super thick. It just needs to be plumped out a little bit so your controller does not uh, press buttons like all over the place anymore. Um, <clears throat> and they previously had stickiness to them while they were in the controller, um, but they lose that stickiness over time. So putting the stickiness on the outside of the rubber is perfect. Um, so then you just press it, press it back down in there, and then you put the little holes over the legs here. And again, you're going to want to be very gentle. Um, and then just press, press the contacts down on the stickiness of the tape. So it looks like that. And then you're going to want to reassemble. And be careful. Make sure to uh, press in the uh, analog sticks. And make sure uh, the plastic goes through the board here. Um, so this is, uh, I use just the right, right amount of tape so the board isn't like sticking up or anything like that. Um, then you reassemble. Uh, don't forget that little screw that you took out. Um, sometimes I think there's uh, certain controllers that have like maybe two screws. So depending on that, if you have any questions, just just leave it in the comments section. Um, but yeah, you don't want to screw that back in too tight, uh, just to where it's flush with the board. Um, and then you go ahead and put your battery back in. Um, the for most controllers, PS3 controllers, the uh, the batteries have these uh, have these little legs on them um, here and here, uh, which connect into the board. Um, or other PS3 controllers, they have uh, they have a little like battery holder that goes over the board um, so depending on what type of battery you have or the replacement batteries generally don't have these legs um, so you kind of have to just set it in there when you do battery replacement and just uh, hope you have it set in correctly um, it'll it'll be a nice fit it'll fit properly and whatnot um, but you want to make sure you have that uh, placed where the uh, original battery had been. Um, so when reassembling, you kind of want to do the same thing you did to take it apart. Um, you put it over the uh, L2 and R2 buttons and you kind of just uh, play with them a little bit until the controller gets uh, right in between those buttons right here so it's like that um, now that uh, that little tab that uh, we were talking about earlier uh, make sure it goes over the battery there we go so this should be good um, and you're gonna want to be gentle you know when you when you do this um, otherwise it uh, it may not work right and uh, you have to kind of situate it right um, so make sure these uh, these are kind of flush here, and then click it together. There we go. And uh, if it's if it's not done right, uh, you can feel difference in the uh, trigger buttons here, um, and uh, it won't be like flush or anything like this. Um, so 
once that's done, you just uh, put every other screw back in and uh, should be good. Um, and again, sometimes for the buttons, um, if you have a button that's not functioning properly, uh, you may clean it off with uh, Q-tips and rubbing alcohol. Also, as I mentioned before, um, you can use tape um, to keep that little plastic part down uh, with the board so that makes button pressing a little easier for you. It's not always uh, a fix that'll work for sure. Um, but sometimes it does. Uh, it just depends on how um, how old those sensors are on the um, in the film for button pressing. Um, it's uh, an unfortunate thing for PS3 controllers, and sometimes it's just uh, not fixable. Um, but for the most part, for your PS3 controller, this will fix the. Uh, the crazy button pressing uh, that presses on its own just by just by like holding the controller or say pressing down L3 or R3 or the start or select button and then everything just goes crazy um, but that should take care of that for uh, for your PS3 controller um, and I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope that uh, it works out for you. Um, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching, and have a good day.